Welcome back to The Morning Drive, where we are combining the great praise and worship of WLGS with the reading and teaching of God's Word each Monday through Friday from 5 to 9.30 a.m. It is a great blessing to be with you. I'm Pastor John Pinnell, the pastor of Calvary Chapel of Lake Villa, and your host on this portion of The Morning Drive. It is time for our devotional. Today we're looking at Mark's Gospel, Chapter 8. I titled this devotional, Satisfied. We read in verse 1, In those days, the multitude, being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, What we learn about the people of the Decapolis, where Jesus had ministered in chapter 7, verse 37, the Bible tells us that the people were astonished beyond measure because of the work of Jesus in their midst. Well, Jesus stayed. He taught them, and he healed their sick. And on the third day, he said to his disciples, verse 2, I have compassion on the multitude because they have been with me three days and have nothing to eat. Jesus knew that if he sent them away hungry, they would faint on the way. But the disciples asked, verse 4, How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? The Greek word that's translated as satisfy refers to food in abundance. Now, Jesus had already fed the 5,000, but it, apparently the disciples continued to look to their own natural resources instead of looking to Jesus to supply the need, a mistake I fear that I have often made. In verse 5, Jesus asked, How many loaves do you have? And they replied, Seven. So Jesus had the multitude sit on the ground. He took up the seven loaves and a few small fish. He blessed and broke them. He gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And all the people ate until they were satisfied. Remember, to supply food in abundance. 4,000 men plus women and children. Afterwards, the disciples even took up seven large baskets of leftovers. And then they departed from the region. In verses 11 and 12, once again, the Pharisees came and disputed with Jesus. Verse 11, seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. And Jesus sighed deeply in his spirit. And he said, verse 12, why does this generation seek a sign? Surely I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. Well, in reality, many signs had been given that clearly pointed to Jesus as their Messiah. Yet the Pharisees were not satisfied with these signs, and they continued on in the hardness of heart and unbelief. So we find in verses 13 through 21 that they departed from the Decapolis, and Jesus warned his disciples, saying, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. So as they departed, they got into the boat. They're on the Sea of Galilee. And verse 14 tells us that the disciples forgot to take bread. They only had one loaf of bread with them for 13 guys. And then Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. And the disciples thought that Jesus was scolding them because they had forgotten to bring bread. Leaven in the Bible was a common Jewish metaphor for an invisible, persuasive influence, something that would grow yet unseen. And he referred it to the leaven of the Pharisees who had this outward piety, a practice of religion, without any inward change in their hearts. The leaven of the Herod or Herodians may refer to those who favored the Herodian line over the Messianic line of David. This same leaven continues to influence our world through the practice of man-made religions, social peace apart from the Prince of Peace. People who seek these paths, well, they will never be satisfied. Verses 22 through 26, we find in Bethsaida, that there was a blind man who came and begged Jesus to touch him. Now Jesus responded by spitting on the man's eyes. 
he put his hands on him and he asked if he could see anything. And the man responded, I see men like trees walking. Then one more touch by Jesus and the man's vision was completely restored. From there, Jesus went up to the area of Caesarea Philippi. And up in that area, verses 27 through 33 tells us that Jesus asked them, who do men say that I am? And so they answered, verse 28, John the Baptist, some say Elijah and others, one of the prophets. And then Peter confessed to Jesus, verse 29, you are the Christ. After this confession by Peter, Jesus began to teach his disciples about his coming, suffering, his death, and his resurrection. When Peter heard this, well, Peter took Jesus aside to rebuke him. Nevertheless, Jesus turned Peter's rebuke against him, calling Peter Satan because he had not been mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. And I wonder how often we are not mindful of the things of God in our own life. The chapter closes, verses 34 through 38, with Jesus calling people to himself with his disciples and saying these words, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. As we close, we find Jesus giving us this great challenge, really four steps that we are to follow as believers in Jesus Christ. We're to first desire Jesus. Second, we're to deny ourselves. Third, we must take up our crosses. And finally, we must follow after Jesus. Those who learn to follow these four steps of faith will discover a satisfaction that only Christ and Christ alone can give. Proverbs 14.14 14 tells us, The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. Let it be so, Lord, that we would find that satisfaction to be full, not necessarily with food, although that may be a need, but Lord, fill us spiritually with your truths. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.